Hey y'all, what's up? We are live. We are on location. Uh, I guess fifty percent here. I'm on location here at the X Bar Ranch. Eddie is in route, basically, if not mentally uh, and physically soon. Uh, Eddie is going to be in route to the X Bar Ranch because it's October, y'all, and it's October New Moon. That means the El Dorado Star Party, and uh, this is a live shot. You can see my hand sort of waving here. This is a live shot from the Lodge Field here at the El Dorado Star Party. This is the first time we've ever done this. Um, I've done a few live streams from a star party before, but never anything quite like this. So uh, we're gonna do an experiment tonight for the astronomy meeting. I, I said, well, the meeting falls on a Friday night where uh, the El Dorado Star Party will be, you know, will be kind of there beforehand or whatever. We like to get here early, some of us. And um, we're here early, and the astronomy meeting for the Astronomical Society of Southeast Texas was tonight. So I said, let's blend the two. And uh, so that's what we're doing. And uh, we're running out of daylight here in uh, West Texas. It's what, 7.07 p.m.? Um, Eddie is just a little further east of me. Eddie, how you doing, man? You doing all right? I'm doing good, Will. I wish I was there with you, but I'll, I'll be there tomorrow for sure. Uh, yeah. Looks like you guys got excellent weather. Way different than what's going on in uh, East Texas right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our, you know, our our thoughts go out to our friends and family out there in Beaumont and the surrounding areas. Of course, Lake Charles and Louisiana. Um, we're getting a hurricane right now, and that's just the way it goes. But I, as you can see out here at the X Bar, uh, I can tilt the camera up a little bit. Oh, and you can see the belt of Venus there, Eddie. Look at that. Wow. What I should do is uh, back it off a little bit here. Yeah, so that's the belt of Venus, y'all. You see this pink band right here, sort of goes across the sky all the way across. We call that the belt of Venus. And uh, I don't know, I, I say we people, uh, I didn't name it. But you can see just below it is this purple region, real dark purple. That's actually the shadow of Earth. Um, so you know it's going to get dark when that shadow starts getting taller and taller. You'll see that purple start growing. The belt of Venus will eventually disappear, and then it'll be a purple thing. And then all of a sudden, it's midnight, right? <laughs> that is beautiful. Well, yeah, here, I'll, take, I'll, I'll show you all around a little bit. This is the X-Bar Ranch. This is the back patio. For those of you all that have been here before, um, you've got nice seating area if you're out here uh, doing some post uh, imaging editing, I guess is what you could call it. Uh, you can hang out here with your friends during non-COVID times and um, just pan across. You can see this is actually the lecture hall down here uh, where we do all of our talks for El Dorado Star Party. And you can see the uh, this is sort of the, the lodge field area. And you can see I'll duck down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'm I'm sort of a silhouette because white balance and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, we thought it'd be cool to come live from the uh, the El Dorado Star Party. We're gonna get into some club business and stuff like that. Uh, we might have some friends join us. Maybe Howard Miner might be able to join us, uh, who is the newsletter editor for the Astronomical Society of Southeast Texas. And um, Eddie is our treasurer. But again, Eddie, like we were saying before, there's no real club business as far as the uh, treasurer goes. The bank account has been very quiet. Uh, we have the same balance at the end of this month that we had at the end of last month. So no expenditures and uh, nothing coming in. So that's not a bad thing. It's typical yeah. for this time of year. Yeah. At this late, we, we don't often uh, get a lot of member memberships or whatever, but that's how that's to be expected. And uh, especially with, you know, the COVID thing going on and all this, it's uh Times are a little bit different. Ch trying to get a little bit wider shot here. If we can watch that belt of Venus evolve a little bit uh, while we're getting through some of the, the early meeting stuff. Uh, so what I'll do now, Will, um, uh, I didn't prepare a PowerPoint presentation for tonight, but what I did do is gather some uh, interesting stuff that I think people will be, you know, for Beaumont, that'll interest everybody. Of course, we do the ISS passes. So we'll get into that real quick. Uh, you can see my screen, right, Eddie? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we've got, what, four uh, ISS passes coming. 
And I would say this guy right here is going to be, well, these two up here are going to be, whoa. <laughs> That's a cool feature we'll look at in a second. But I think these top two, uh, well, actually, it's uh, it's past the eighth. I'm sorry. So here we go. Here's your best one. Uh, what is that, 830, Eddie? Yes. 20. 20. Yeah, and so it'll be a lower pass. As you can see, it kind of goes down lower on the horizon. Uh, down under Boates and uh, through Serpens, Ophiuchus, stuff like that. And uh, and then one for the next night, which will be just above it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that's at, what, 742. So these are low. These are lower passes, you know, um, might be a little harder to see. But, uh, you know, they're always fun. You might see something on the horizon, you're like, what is that? And then you check it and it's, it's ISS. Um, but then as the month goes on, you see it trends toward the morning here. And, uh, again, these are for Beaumont. Um, that's, you know, our club is based in Beaumont. So I always show the, the Beaumont centric stuff, but if you're anywhere in the world and you're watching this, you can get on heavens above, uh, .com. You can see it there, uh, heavens above and put where you are in the world. And, uh, it will put out the Starlink passes, the, um, a North Korean satellite for some reason, Hubble several other things, you know, and especially the ISS, of course. And it's really cool because it'll show you these passes uh, sort of in real time. And you can kind of go in here and say, you know, on this really bright pass on uh, October 20th, which is what, next week sometime, I think, a uh, week after next even, uh, at 66 degrees, you can see I go here and you can see it's very, you know, through the middle of the sky, basically, uh, right above Leo, right above Venus. That'd be a, a beautiful pass there. And um, so, yeah, get on heavensabove.com. I know Eddie uses this, right, Eddie? You get on here quite a bit. Yeah, I, I look at that uh, anytime I want to look for the ISS. It's pretty darn accurate. I haven't been let down by it yet. It, yeah, I, I enjoy it. I, I, you know, there's a dozen sources for this kind of stuff, I guess. But, um, you know, this is one of the better ones. This I one's feel. easy to use. Um, there's ISS, you know, finder and, you know, all, there's all kinds of stuff. But I, I use this and it goes, you can see it goes pretty far out. Well, actually, it goes not that far out. It goes up to the October 25th. So uh, there may be a boost mission or something to get it back up on on target or something. to do that. And that, that uh, kind of ruins the predictive uh, nature of it, unfortunately. Um, so that's your ISS passes for Beaumont for uh, most of October anyway. So mostly mornings, as you can see, you early risers are going to enjoy that for sure. Very good. Uh, okay. So with that, Eddie, I'll turn it back over to you, man, if you would. And then um, maybe I, I, you know, I know we talked earlier, you know, you, and you do our solar reports, but um, not much activity, huh? No, Will, it's, it's been a very quiet month. Uh, it's humbling to, to uh, realize after the last few months, we had so much activity. We were getting so excited about uh, the new solar cycle 25 coming up. And uh, this month, it just, uh, like I said, it was humbling to all of a sudden we had one sunspot that lasted two days. And it wasn't even consecutive days. It, it was there one day, it disappeared, and then it came back. But uh, I, I put a, together a, a short report, just kind of maybe let everybody kind of see what's going on, if you want to see it. Absolutely. Let's see it. All right. Let's see about sharing my screen. Sorry, I, I got caught. I'll put it up as soon as I see it. But for for the for while we're waiting, I just uh, thought I'd give us another shot of the lodge field here at the El Dorado Star Party, pre El Dorado Star Party. Hey, cool. well, I wanted to ask you. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that telescope that's out there? Do you know? Oh, sure. Yeah, there? real quick before, if you want to. Um, this is a uh, this is my friend Mark Farages. He's actually just joined us. Uh, he is the current steward of this particular telescope uh let me see if i can zoom in there 
And um, Mark's right here. Mark, I mean, it's a 25 inch telescope. Uh, Mark is a member of the Astronomical Society of Houston. I put him on camera, but he would be 900 times his normal size because of the zoom. Uh, but that's his that's his telescope. And I mean, Mark, you've had it for a while now, huh? Yeah, I got it like uh, I think 20, 2016, 2017. Yeah, nice. But I rebuilt most of it. Rebuilt it, yeah. I, mean, I got it. I mean, I think I got a pretty decent deal on it, but I've redone all the servo cat, all the Argo, all the forwards, all the time. So it's got a good mirror. Yeah, yeah. definitely. The highest right. solar obsession ever made. Two thousand three telescopes. Wow. wow. And it, y'all, this is a twenty-five inch piece of glass. Uh, you know, it's a circle, twenty-five inches in diameter. Uh, it's it's massive, and it's it's full two inch thickness. Two hundred pound mirror. Two hundred pound mirror. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, How you uh, doing, it's Mark? What's, good, uh, what's up, good to hear from you again, man. And he said, "Good to hear from you again." Right? Yeah, you too, He's on here, yeah. Yeah. Hey, and yeah. I have looked through that scope. That is a remarkable scope. Uh, Mark Faraz is uh, it's a wizard, technical wizard, and anything he puts his hands on, he's, you're going to walk away from it. It's going to be better. Yeah. Uh, he he looked at my scope. I was having some power issues as I was slewing left and right, and uh. I mean, he looked at it for like 10 minutes and fixed it. So, yeah, Mark is a genius when it comes to telescope. Like, like you know, he's not joking when he says he rebuilt the scope. And, uh, you know, he's got he's got some night vision, which is going to actually allow us to broadcast galaxies, star clusters and things later. Um, but, Eddie, why, why don't we get back to this uh, thing and I'll put up some comments uh, from the crowd while you're uh, while you're telling us about what the sun is doing. Okay. Uh, let me know when you're sharing. Yeah, you're good to go. You're up now. Okay. So uh, this is the solar cycle report. It's going to cover uh, a little bit of September and what we are in October. As you can see from this graph, you know, here's our solar maximum. We go to minimum in 2009 20, and then kind of a double peaked maximum. And now we're in a minimum. Uh, we're coming out of it. We're in a new solar cycle, 25. And uh, it's going to peak in July of 2025. That's the prediction. But as of right now, as you can see, we're right here. And I'm going to keep pointing this out because uh, this week was an interesting one. Uh, here's a calendar of the month. Here was our last meeting was uh, on September 11th of last month. And as you can see, the entire month passed and the yellow blocks are where we had uh, sunspots. And there was one on the 24th and it disappeared and it came back on the 26th. And that was it for the month. One sunspot for two days, not even consecutive. Wow. Was, like I said, it's a little bit of a uh, humbling experience to, to have this, but we're going to look at a little bit of data. Just uh, you look at the gray lines. This is a count of uh, days since the last sunspot. And what's interesting is we got to 33. And that's interesting because that's one of the longest stretches of days without a sunspot. I think we did it one time in February and March of this year. And uh, I'll show you a, a graphic a little bit later to show you how amazing that is. Uh, of course, if you look at the gray lines here, this shows the continuous count of sun, sunless, sunspotless days throughout the year. So as of today, we're at 203 sunspotless days, which is, that's a lot of sunspotless days in a year, but it's not, not terrible. I mean, we are in a minimum. Remember that. Yeah. So here's the top spotless year since 1849. And uh, here we are in 2020. We made the top 25 sunspotless. It was 2019 last year, top four. And then here's 2018. That was a pretty severe solar minimum. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's uh, a graphic that shows spotless days that were above 30 days. 
the longest run was 92 days back in 1913. And we're not even close to that. We're way down here. We're, we're in a 16th position. We've had 34. Uh, this was in March of 2020. I think we tied it or we, we got close. What did we say? We're at 33. We made 33 last week. So we got close. We did, we didn't quite tie it, but we will be in this top 20 rankings. Anyway. Wow. Uh, dry month. So I decided to make this graphic and, uh, this is spotless days by year. So the years are on the bottom. They trend this way. As this goes up, this is not good. This is bad. This is spotless days. But you can see this was solar minimum in 2008 and 2009. And then it fell off pretty quick as we went to solar maximum, which is nice. This We, we want to see this again. So here's where we came up to solar minimum again. And uh, here we are this year. We'll probably accumulate a few more and raise the number on this graph, but hopefully in 2021, it'll, it'll drop off like it did in 2010 and we'll come down here. Remember 2025 is solar maximum. So we expect something like this. Mm -hmm. So although it was a, a slow month, uh, I have hopes and uh, I, I think it's gonna, it's gonna get better. So here was a sunspot that we had uh, on the 21st, it started rolling around the limb of the sun. Uh, it's pretty nice uh, view there. Uh, there's a close up of it and you can see the, the active region. It's got a lot of these loops of solar material and magnetic lines and a little bit even blowing off into space. So that we had some pretty good hopes on that. So uh, here it is in white light. Uh, not as great to look at there. And yeah. I, at this point, we don't even have a sunspot. It's just an active region. So here it is on the 24th. And uh, as you can see, it's not much, but it was enough to have a sunspot. And then the 25th, it, the active region's still there, but the sunspots went away. And then uh, the next day they came back and, and that was that. It was done for the month. So since we didn't have any sunspots, I thought I might take this opportunity to talk about uh, the sunspot number. To me, this was a, a very confusing point of data uh, when they calculated the sunspot number. They're not talking about this number here. This number is the active region. We don't actually put a number on sunspots. We put a number on active regions. Now, when, when we say we put a number on them, that means we designate them. When we talk about the sunspot number, we're talking about a count. So you can see on the 24th, we had a, a sunspot number of 13. And a couple of days later, same, same active region had a sunspot number of 11. And of course, with a blank sun, sunspot number, there's no sunspots, it's zero. So how do we, how do we calculate that sunspot number? Well, if you click on uh, that link, this is what you come up with. They've been using this formula since 1848. And uh, wow. I don't want to get too technical, so I kind of broke it down. So here's the formula. And when you look at this, it's a little bit overwhelming and uh, distasteful. I, I don't like looking at stuff like this, but that's the sunspot <laughs> number. That's the number of sunspots on the solar disk. That's an actual count. And the way they get it is they use the formula and they take this variable, which is the number of sunspot groups on the solar disk. They take that variable, which is the total number of individual uh, spots in the groups. And then they take that number, which is the variable scaling factor it's between zero and one, so it's going to be point something. And the reason they do that is because uh, all these observatories, they've got different telescopes and different weather conditions. And so they have to account for that or everybody would get a drastically different sunspot count. 
Mm-hmm. So that's the formula they use. And uh, uh, if you have a, a binocular uh, type of observing system, you're not going to see as many sunspots. So maybe that scaling number is going to be uh, pretty high. Uh, so if you are looking through the Hubble, that variable scaling factor is going to be very, very low to kind of equalize the, the count. Yeah. All right, so scientists combine the data from lots of observatories, and each observatory has its own K factor, and that's how you get your daily value of sunspots. For those wow. of you that didn't know. I've, I've often wondered about that. Yeah, I, I knew it was complicated. I just, uh, I never took the time to really look and, and understand it in a way that I could explain it, and I, I hope that clarified it a little bit. Uh, Suffice it to say that it's a calculation. Yeah. Uh, and what's cool is if you need to rewind that, if you're watching this and you need to rewind it, you can rewind it. And Eddie broke it down for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just remember, uh, here's a group that's an active region. And then so you'd count how many of these groups are on the sun. This would be one. And then you'd look very hard with your optical instrument to see how many sunspots you see in that group and then you'd apply that formula put your scaling factor on it and that's the number that you would report very cool all right so uh i got a video uh hopefully we'll be able to see how the sunspot rolls around uh, i'm gonna start it it's a pretty short video um here it comes there it is active region and a sunspot for two days, and that was it. You can see the active region didn't change much. And uh, there's actually a couple of active regions right here today. They started yesterday, I think, mm -hmm. but no sunspots associated with them. So we'll kind of wait and see what happens there. Maybe next month I'll be reporting on those. So uh, here it is in a different frequency. This one shows a little bit... Uh, more of the uh, active region that's going to spin around this limb. Here it comes. Wow. It's pretty big. I mean, you can compare it to the size of the earth, but no sunspots associated with it. Wow. Uh, I'm going to show one more uh, frequency, Will, and this next frequency is going to show a, a different phenomenon uh, that I kind of want to touch on, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, so here comes that active region. Look at all those flux lines. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I'm going to stop it right here. You see these dark areas? Yeah. These are called coronal holes. Now, they're not actually holes in the sun, but they're places where, uh, where the temperature's lower. And what happens is uh, you get solar wind come, that comes out of it. Particles come out and they stream out into space and they come in contact with Earth. And uh, I always thought that aurora were more prominent in the winter time when the nights were shorter. But it turns out that aurora are pretty prominent during the, the equinoxes. And we just had an equinox, I think September 22nd. And because of these coronal holes spewing out the solar wind, now it's not very dense, not like a coronal mass ejection when it spews out a bunch of material, but still it's enough wind. And it, there's a, an effect, it's called the Russell McFerrin effect. And it has to do with the magnetic field of the earth and it's tw tilted at 23 degrees, and the magnetic field of the sun that's tilted at a different angle, I think seven degrees, and something happens around the equinoxes that our Earth's magnetosphere gets cracks in it, and it lets in this very uh, non-dense solar wind. So hmm. you get aurora during the equinox. I didn't know that. No. Uh, you certainly have to stay up a little bit later because uh, 
the, the nights aren't as short. I mean, you, you have equal day and night, I guess, during the equinoxes. Absolutely, yeah. But look at all the corona holes. It's a beautiful image. This is um, SDO, right? Uh, yes, yes. I get all of the, uh, the videos from uh, uh, the J Helios website. Okay. Anyway, that's the solar report. Uh, like I said, here we are in solar minimum. We had a uh, one sunspot for two non-consecutive days, and that was that. Hopefully, yeah. uh, I, I got to believe that next month will be better. Let's hope, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's hey, thank the you, Will. Thank you, and um, you got a compliment from our friend Stephen Hummel, who we all know and uh, usually hang out with. Great explanation, Eddie. So there you go. Oh, yeah. Well, believe me, I spent a lot of time looking at that uh, Russell McFerrin effect, and uh, I started to put out some graphics, but, I mean, it's nothing but math and some very complex diagrams. So I, I dumbed it down to say it has to do with magnetic fields. Yes. Hey, magnetic fields is what uh, apparently what real scientists invoke when they can't explain something, right? So they're like, <laughs> oh, well, that's just a magnetic field phenomenon, you know. It's yeah. Like, it's like a go to thing for a Star Trek episode. But that was a, that was fascinating, Andy. Thank you. There'd be a round of applause if we were all in person oh. for you. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll say hello to a couple people in the chat room. Carl Dunn's in the house. Cosmos Carl is what he says is here. So good to see you, Carl. And uh, Stephen says, during equinox cracks at previous solar uh, maximums, aurora have been visible at McDonald. Wow. Which is in West Texas. That's good to know. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll start planning my aurora trips a little bit differently now. Because uh, I was thinking they had to be in late fall, you know, as much as as far into the winter as I could stand to go to those locations because it gets cold yeah absolutely and we are still live here at the el dorado star party it's it's again it's the pre-party we're not quite into the el dorado star party yet we've got a couple more days and mr eddie trevino right there on the screen will be joining us out here his scope will probably be somewhere uh over here you can see my green tarp back here that's where my 22 inch obsession will go and then of course we have our friend mark barrages telescope which is I'm, I'm a horrible weather man but you can see mark's telescope right there and uh, all his stuff you can see it is getting dark here and there is no going back now night is going to happen <laughs> we are going to experience nightfall um but i'll turn the camera and you can kind of see toward the south here which is a pretty dark uh area of el dorado toward this direction uh, just to the left of that post there we get the lights of sonora and they're not too bad though, right, Eddie? I mean, it's not too bad. Oh, you're muted, Eddie, sorry. There you yeah, go. that's not bad at all, Will. If, if the humidity is low, you won't even notice them. That's true, that's very true. Um, but you can see, this is the lodge field, that's my head, I'll move out of the way. And, um, you know, this is where we always, this is where I've always set up at this star party um and i think maybe you as well eddie maybe you set up at the other field but uh, i think you did set up down there one year didn't you i set up at the other field uh the first two times i went to el dorado i set up down there oh okay gotcha and, uh, uh, this one uh, i i prefer this one yeah this, it's, it's really close to where our campers are and stuff and of course it's close to the lodge we can go in for hot cocoa or whatever we need in the middle of the night. Snyder's here and he says, my daughters got to look at the sun the other day. They were impressed. That's awesome, Snyder. That's, you know, I, I didn't get to look at the sun until I was an adult. So <laughs> you're um, you're doing the right thing for your for your daughters. That's for sure. Uh, Joe says, hello, and save a spot for me on the field. Well, Joe, I think we were gonna put you right out there in that valley somewhere. <laughs> you can see this deep crevasse. Yeah. Joe, there's a place. Yeah, it's it's well protected by cactus, so nobody's gonna bother you. Yeah, it's it's way out there. There's no coyotes at all. We didn't hear any coyotes or any kind of predator animals out there. Although there is a porcupine that lives at this lodge now. Um, what? 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna call him Quill or Quinn or something. I don't know, Pork, Porky. But uh, I was out here on the on the back patio. In fact, I'll just zoom. I'll just pan around. I was um, right over here, basically, and uh, I heard something. I heard a bump in the night, and down here under one of these chairs, there was a big porcupine, and um, he grunted at me, which I've never. I didn't know that uh, porcupines grunted. Which was yeah, that's a new one on me. But or uh, or what's up, dude? Yeah, you know, I, I thought about saying hello, but you know, he scared me. But yeah, Joe uh, Joe Caleb, uh, the president of the Houston Astronomical Society, he'll be joining us later this week, which will be awesome. We'll be having him out here, and uh, all the all the typical faces. And uh, speaking of typical faces, there's there's another one just walked out on the back patio. Mr. Carl Baltz, you have to duck down a little bit. There he is. It's a little dark, but there he is. That's Carl. Say hello, Carl. Hello, everybody. I just came him here to give him a COVID hug. <laughs> a just socially distance hug. There you go. Good, my yeah, you too. We'll talk to you soon, man. Okay. Carl's a regular out at the El Dorado Star Party, volunteer, uh, all around good guy. He's he's camped on the other field uh, at the main uh, the main observing field, which is sort of back. Uh, to the south of us here, and uh, it's a big field, but uh, that's where a lot of people uh, decide to set up. Spencer Pratt's coming out. Uh, there he is. See you guys Monday. I'll be pulling up at the X bar in the afternoon Monday. Very cool. I think a lot of people are going to be arriving Monday. It looks like, which is fine. You know, um, I would get here a little early because I can, and I like to, uh, you know, get my spot and get out of the way so people can get into their camper spots. It's a little bit like Tetris over here with the camper spots. Or it can be. And uh, so uh, I like to get here early, do a little volunteering, you know, get some observing in while we're here, right? And tonight we'll be on Mark's telescope again. This is a 25 inch telescope. We'll be using night vision. And uh, so I may or may not try to do a Facebook broadcast here on Deep Sky Dude. If you're not following the Deep Sky Dude Facebook page, follow there. And uh, there may be a Facebook live stream later tonight. But since Eddie was talking about the sun, I want to mention something pretty cool for us that are coming or that are going, I guess, to the El Dorado Star Party this year. We do have COVID uh, protocols in place. as we're only wearing masks and all that stuff, uh, socially distancing our telescopes. My tarp is further away from um, marks than it looks. <laughs> but uh, so here's, here's uh, I'm going to bring this up main screen style here. This is ISS Transit Finder. If you're unfamiliar with this website, it's going to tell you when and where the International Space Station will transit either the sun or the moon. Uh, and it does do that for places on planet Earth. So you can be like, well, I'm going to be here for these dates. Will there be an ISS transit of the sun with, uh, you know, from, from my vantage point? And it'll tell you. It'll be like, yeah, there's one down the road at 3 p.m. on a Friday. All you have to do is be in this particular location. So I'll show you all what I mean. So here's the one for the prediction for uh, sort of this El Dorado, Texas area where the uh, El Dorado Star Party is every year. And you can see there's this, uh, they rank them in stars. So this is a four star pass. It's gonna be pretty good. You got a three star pass. It's gonna be, eh, you know, good. A one star pass is like, you probably might not even wanna mess with this one. And whereas, you know, uh, a three star again is kind of in between but uh, this one right here on Wednesday is going to be pretty good uh, for us out here at the El Dorado Star Party. Um, it's going to be basically, I'll zoom in here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so Ozona is here. We are here at this pin. And uh, this is going to be the pass here. You can see this would be the disk of the sun that you would see. And... Um, well, let's see. I got to get back to my window here. This gives you a bunch of information. I won't go into all that because if you know, if y'all want to know what all this means and you need a, you need a question answered, email me. I'll I'll break it down for you. But uh, this is going to tell us where we need to be and what we're going to see. So we're going to see the ISS go across the disk of the sun this direction, right? Uh, it, the the past is going to take less than a second. Point zero. I'm sorry, zero point seven seconds. So from this side to that side in less than a second. All right. And as long as you're in this line on planet Earth, you will see this pass. So you could be up here in San Angelo uh, or you could be down here in nowhere, Texas. 
and see it. And this is for every one of those passes. So I can close this map. I can go down here to this Wednesday here. And you can see there's another pass kind of going the other way. And it's, a, it's just a tenth of a second more, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, not too bad. But the reason I'm bringing all this up is for those of y'all that are coming out to the Texas, I mean, sorry, the El Dorado Star Party, bring your solar scope. Because what we should do is try to, uh, on one of these passes, get ourselves um, uh, on the map in one of these locations. Here's, what, here's I think, the best pass. One actual second <laughs> duration of this pass. And you That's see we crazy. have to be you know, somewhere here east of Sonora, basically. If you're over here, you'll see that you'll see ISS cross the very edge of the sun. Uh, likewise, if you're down here, you'll see ISS barely go across the sun. So you want to be right in the middle, which puts, again, the line right in the middle. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so this is on a Monday. So it's the day right before opposition of Mars and uh, 10, 12, 2020 at 9.55 a.m. It's going to be an early one. And again, it's going to be right here on the map in San Angelo. Now this works, this uh, website predicts passes for everybody. So um, if you live anywhere in the world, in fact, I'll just go back one step here and show you all the main page, transit-finder.com. Um, so just put a dash right there, transitfinder.com. And uh, you put in your latitude longitude, you can, have, you can select it from the map or auto detect wherever you're at and the dates you wanna see, how far you're willing to travel in kilometers, and then you calculate it. And it brings you to the screen after it does its calculations. And uh, there's the passes. Oh, and it looks like there is a lunar transit now. Let's let's show that one real quick. Well, look at this. Uh, I didn't see this one. This is on the 29th. So, um, so this is several uh, several weeks from now. But th there it is. You, if you you'd see a moon, and you'd see, well, I guess it's what appears to be a full moon, and you'd see ISS go right across, which I think would be beautiful to see from out here. Um, but you can see, yeah, here's El Dorado Star Party. So if you were actually at the at the X Bar Ranch where we're at, you would see, and you were looking at the moon at this exact time, which is 4:25 a.m. on this uh, October 29th, you'd see ISS go right across the side of the moon like that. That'd be pretty interesting. Um, but I won't be here for that, and I'm I'm sure Eddie won't be here for that. But that's the way it goes. Um, uh, well, how accurate are those times? Uh, pretty accurate. I, you know, I've, I've driven to the beach before, um, basically, you know, on a whim with a solar filter and went out to, uh, the beach. I went to the deep woods of East Texas once to do this and caught it both times. And it was very accurate, Eddie. Um, not down, I couldn't tell you down to the 10th of a second, but I could tell you down to the, um, at least the second or so uh it it goes right across one time i thought i missed it and i was like man i didn't get it so i went home and went and looked at the footage and there it was it was going across the sun so it was very cool um wow. but um yeah spencer pratt says couldn't get a spot in the lodge field uh yeah the the, the lodge is a is a crowded place these days even even during COVID times and it's uh sometimes hard to get a, a spot down here but uh, spencer does say he's He'll, uh, he'll see us Monday, and uh, Eddie's coming out here in the next couple of days. There's already a few of us out here. Um, you can actually see the uh, the towers in the distance, I think, kicking on because it's that level of dark. There's one. You see it blinking on the horizon out there, um, oh, which is pretty cool. And um, should be a good night, though. The skies are really clear. Uh, we're going to play around with some night vision stuff tonight. and. Um, yeah, well, hopefully we'll be able to do a stream. We will see. Um, let me get rid of this real quick, and then I want to cover one more thing, and then we'll be good for the evening. You know, this was an experiment. We've never done a, uh, a, a star party asset meeting, but we're doing it tonight just for fun, just to have a good time. Um, and it's like y'all are here at the star party with us. What's up, Jeffrey? How you doing? Good to see you. So those of y'all that maybe. You, didn't, you know, you couldn't get to Texas for an El Dorado star party or a Texas star party.
maybe something like this will help you kind of feel like you're there and uh, experiencing it with us. But I'm going to zoom out a little bit, see if I can get uh, a little bit better view. What I can do also is turn the ISO up. Give me one second, guys, and I'll um, I'll zoom out here. I can go to, I know y'all are looking at the wall here, but um, let's see here. We'll just turn the ISO up on the camera until it's like crazy. Okay, there's 80,000 ISO. And let's see what it will look like. That's what 80,000 ISO looks like. That's amazing. Not too bad. There we go. But yeah, we're getting ready. Mark's getting ready. Um, mosquitoes are out. I will tell y'all this. Uh, mosquitoes are here warmer than it normally is, I think. And they've had a lot of rain this year. So if you are coming out to El Dorado Star Party, bring some mosquito spray. You will thank yourself for it. I promise you. Uh, okay, Carl says, I didn't know about the transit finder. I've been trying to get a picture of ISS. Thanks for sharing. Hey, good luck, Carl. I, uh, I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions on using it, please let me know. And I will try to help you. Uh, it helped me get a slow motion pass of the ISS when our two American astronauts were up there a few months ago. Uh, and that was really cool. It went right across the moon. I got it in 240 frames a second. It was beautiful. Um, in fact, people were like, you're faking it. That's a picture of the moon. And you did an animation of the ISS. <laughs> I'm like, y'all, I'm not, I'm way too lazy to, to fake this. I mean, this is not even, uh, but yeah. Um, Jeffrey says, great looking at 80,000 ISO, not much noise or grain. Yeah, uh, it'll get worse as, as, as the, you know, as the contrast changes, as it gets darker. But man, you can see my hand pretty well here. Um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, one more thing I wanted to cover Eddie before we go, uh, let's see, let me, um, okay, here we go. And then I'll share this Chrome tab, you know, the Nobel prize is the thing that happens every once in a while. I don't know much about it, but it sounds cool. It's a great thing. They win money and they change the world all at the same time. Right. Um, and, uh, it happens that this year's Nobel prize in 2020 goes to some black hole researchers. Uh, these three here, you got Roger Penrose, Reinhard Genzel, and Andrea Getz, um, all from their respective universities. Two Americans and one uh, one guy from the UK, it looks like. And um, uh, they did a thing on the black, uh, black holes, and it was a study. I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm not going to bore everyone with the details, even though it's not boring to me at all. Uh, it's pretty fascinating stuff. But um, I had to mention it uh, because, you know, they've proven they've proven a bunch of stuff that, you know, Albert Einstein theorized. And I think that's fascinating. Um, and so there it is. If you all know nothing else, you all know that the grant the, the Nobel Prize this year in physics was black holes. That's pretty cool. Uh, so that means that we've got some new knowledge on black holes as a species. Uh, we know about these exotic objects. Uh, that are just out there and uh, they're no longer theory. You know, we know that these things are real and it's very, very cool. And I don't know, Eddie, did, have you heard anything about this or what, what, are, you, what are your thoughts? Let's, let's let you weigh in real quick. Uh, this is the first I hear about it, Will, but just kind of looking at it, it, it kind of looks like they, uh, they've pretty well agreed that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. Uh, from what I was able to pick up, just yeah. a few lines, and I—I uh, I mean, that's been a theory for a long time, but apparently they—they they were able to uh, validate it some way. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that know way more about it than we do. But um, I thought I'd bring it up here just as a an extra little cherry on top, uh, you know, for our first live broadcast from a star party. I don't know. Uh, it's it's pretty cool that all this stuff kind of culminates or you know comes together coalesces if you will uh, you know with this kind of stuff and I guess it's just science doing its thing and going on through the ages. Um, and, interesting. Um, That's an astronomical discovery, but I mean they got the the uh, Nobel Prize in physics, which is yeah. You know, that physics is a science of space. A lot of it is. Absolutely. It's, this, it's how space works in some ways, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, so Andy says uh, that white paper is a great read. Interesting. I might have to uh, give it a look. Um, 
I'm sure there's videos out there too for people for dumb people like me uh, to you know learn about this kind of stuff because sometimes I read stuff and I'm, I'm like what what are they talking about but um, yeah very cool stuff and um, basically we'll cap it out here um, with uh, with a shot of El Dorado I know that um, you know we're the only star party this year that's kind of going ahead with the festivities uh and that you know it's we're doing things uh by the cdc's guidelines now and by texas governor's guidelines we're following uh all the protocols we can not only for a star party with like white light restriction rules and all that but also with you know social distancing and, and everything like that so hopefully uh we can have a fun event uh, i'm looking out here naked eye across the field and what i see on the screen is way brighter than what i see uh uh, into my eyes anyway on here it's getting very dark now and uh, it's almost observing time which is exciting and, it's amazing um, how quickly the stars come out when you're in dark sky like that and they just say it again, Eddie? it's amazing how quickly the, the stars appear when you're under dark skies like that yeah, uh, totally. you see one and then you see 10 and then there's a hundred and then a thousand it's it's, it's amazing yeah and you know, like Eddie said, as the night progresses, you, you, you're like, oh, okay, there's Jupiter, maybe, or there's Saturn, or cool, you know, you start getting in the groove of it, as we do as amateur astronomers, and then, like you said, before you know it, uh, you're under the Milky Way, you know, and uh, it's bright, and it's taking up your entire field of vision, uh, which is a beautiful thing, and it's something you really can only experience at a dark sky location. Uh, this is about as dark as it gets. There is that you can get a little bit darker skies than here, but not much darker, uh, just a little bit. And um, it, it, it really does um, kind of highlight to you what light pollution does. You know, even a few street lights in a town can uh, can really do some damage. Well, I, I think I lost my camera. Well, that's okay. What I can do here is, <laughs> sorry, I knew the battery would run out of eventually. So let me fix this real quick, guys, and then we'll, We'll call it an evening for tonight. If y'all have any last minute comments or questions, let us know. I know it's a dark image, but uh, uh, there's there an interesting, there's an What's interesting that? question. There's an interesting question on the, uh, on the board here about, can you see the center of the Milky Way with the telescope? Go ahead, Eddie. Answer. Uh, no, you cannot. The center of the Milky Way is obscured by all the dust that is in the center of the Milky Way. There's plenty of dust all over the Milky Way, but as you look towards the center, it, it just, it stacks up and stacks up and you, you just can't see through it. That's right. You can see the area, like you can look over that direction, right? But you're, Eddie's right. There's too many stars and dust to see into that area. And they're doing it all with uh, X-ray, I think, or gamma ray observatories, stuff like that. Yeah. That can sort of see through that stuff. Uh, Jeffrey says, hypothesis uh, to theory is a thesis and now proven fact. Great minds. Glad they won the prize. Absolutely. Yeah. So you take an idea from a hypothesis. You, you test it all the way through. It becomes a theory. And now we have a law. Some people confuse theory with hypothesis. They're like, I have a theory. And what they really mean is, I, I think they mean I, I have a hypothesis, uh, right? And the theory is like a set of laws that we know works, like the theory of gravity, theory of evolution, things like that. Um, okay. So, I mean, we knew it was going to be a short meeting. I knew it was going to run out of light. We didn't want to run it too early. Uh, so we ran it then. And I think it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty dark out here now. But uh, we were able to get sunset out at El, El Dorado uh, Star Party, which is pretty cool at the X-Bar Ranch, uh, which is fantastic. Um, again, Eddie will be joining me uh, in just a couple of uh, hours, just a few few hours, hopefully. And uh, we're going to go get ready to observe. And I think the skies are going to be pretty good. Eddie, do you have any uh, final thoughts for the October meeting of the Astronomical Society of Southeast Texas? I think it was a pretty cool meeting there. You did it on site at the X-Bar Ranch. That's the first. We've had a lot of firsts this year, Will. Uh, I, I think what you're doing is uh, you're testing some new ground and uh, you might change the way we do meetings from here going forward. 
even after we can all get together in one room. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's, it's opened up uh, some weird possibilities for us, maybe some good, but like Eddie said, it's been a year of first, good or bad, you know, <laughs> for the club. I mean, this is the first time we've not met all year, um, but we're, we're, we canceled all of our in-person meetings for obvious reasons. And uh, we're just trying it online to see if it's going to work and see if we can get it done. It, it seems like it's, you know, we're keeping the club together. There's a social thing. We can chat. Uh, people can make comments and things. And so that's kind of like the vibe of what we do in person anyway. So, um, but Eddie, thank you for being treasurer. Thank you for serving on the club's board. Um, it, it takes a little time out of our month, you know, to do this kind of stuff for the club, but it's a labor of love. We all believe in, in the, an asset as a club uh it's a good club i it, i it happened before i got here and then i joined in 09 and have been a member ever since and uh, i know it happened before eddie was really kind of paying attention to his early 90s i guess or mid 90s when, when it formed so um pretty cool man but uh thank you for what you do eddie oh my pleasure will thank you for what you do i think you've been a, a great president for our club you really have you. a encouraged a lot of people to join and you've always got some activities in mind uh it's been a pleasure uh being in the club since you've been president well thank it's you been a pleasure being that. In the club, period we've had some great presidents in the past but uh absolutely yeah, yeah. uh I'm, we stand on the shoulders of giants right yeah yeah absolutely uh jeffrey says orion nebula was the first thing i saw last year oh nice yeah tj was saying the, the you know he's seen Haley's comment that's a pretty rare thing i mean a lot of people well who, people who were alive in the 80s probably had a, a you know a little store-bought telescope or whatever but uh i would that would have been interesting to see i was only like three when Haley's comet came around so uh, i may have seen it but it wasn't anything where i was like that's a comet you know um i, I never saw Haley's comet it came and yeah. went in my lifetime and uh I just didn't see it. Yeah. There's been I, some I, better comments though. Yeah. Yeah. Over the years, I've heard it was kind of a lackluster thing. So maybe we didn't miss much, Eddie, you know, I think it was a, a, a telescope item. And uh, at that time I was, I didn't have a telescope. So. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Binoculars are a telescope. Uh, probably a lot like the one we just had, you know, you, you could see it. It was there, the comet, but if you put a telescope or binoculars on it, it was really there and really nice. Yeah. Um, so sometimes that happens. Comments are unpredictable. So, uh, okay. Well, we'll call it there. Uh, thank y'all for joining us for the October meeting of the Astronomical Society of Southeast Texas. Uh, if you're interested in joining, you can um, follow the Facebook here, message us. Uh, we will get with, we'll get with you and explain how all that works. You can be a member of our club from anywhere in the world. Uh, our dues are 30 a year for your whole family and uh, you can join us, but I mean, we do prorate, but I mean, you might as well join for 2021 at this point, right? Uh, yeah. And just be a sort of an honorary member, but um, we'd love to have y'all. Uh, we are a, uh, a nonprofit. So if you want to donate money to us for some reason, we are tax deductible for in that, in that reason or that way. Uh, so that would be great. We get some last minute con comments here. Steve Muncie is in the house. Um, I saw it through a six inch Edmonds scientific reflector. That's an old name right there. That's an old relic from back in the day. Steve Muncy is normally out here with us, but he couldn't join us this year. So we miss Steve. Uh, good to hear from you, Steve. Thank Thanks for joining us, Andy. And uh, we'll see you later, Jeff. Uh, so until Jeff. next month, we, uh, you know, we'll do this. We'll keep doing this online until the Beaumont Independent School District lets us come back and meet in the building, uh, which who knows when that will be, but we will follow CDC guidelines even then and uh, make sure we're trying to do our part in, in keeping the spread down. Uh, wash your hands, uh, wear your masks, and uh, use hand sanitizer, whatever. Don't slap your friends in the face. Not right now. Save it. Um, <laughs> hashtag wash your hands. Uh, Steve yeah. already put it down. There it is. He's washing, he's washing his hands. You should wash your hands. Eddie, thank you for joining us tonight, man. We appreciate it. Have safe journeys up here. Okay, well, enjoy your observing tonight. Uh, stay safe, my friend.
yeah, hopefully it's good. Uh, if it's good, we'll I'll be doing another stream later if, when we get bored. Uh, so tune into that if y'all are bored. We'll, we'll yeah. try to get it out there on Facebook for y'all. Thank y'all for joining us. Uh, we will see y'all next month for the November 2020 Asset Astronomical Meeting. And we'll keep meeting online until we have to. Spencer, have a great uh, evening, great weekend. Great Friday afternoon, y'all. Have a, have a safe weekend. We will see y'all next month. Have a good one. Peace.